Pre-Calculus Unit 1, Lesson 3, 12 Basic Functions and Piecewise Functions. You need to be able to recognize these 12 different functions, or at least most of them. As we go through, I want you to write in or circle the properties that each one of these functions have. So the identity, which is y equals x, is a straight line through the origin, which has a slope of 1. Is that an even or an odd function? And then because of that, is it symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the origin? You should have selected that this is odd and symmetric with respect to the origin. All right, now the squaring function, y equals x squared, which touches at the origin and then goes up, is that an even or an odd function? Is it symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the origin? And then where is it bounded? What's the smallest thing it can go down to? The smallest y-value is what? That would be that it's bounded below by. The square root function, y equals the square root of x, which starts at 0, goes through 1, 1, goes through 4, 2, and so on, keeps going up. What is the domain of that function? What's it bounded below by? The cubing function, y equals x cubed, starts at minus infinity and goes up to 0, and then goes all the way up to infinity. Is that an even or an odd function? And because of that, is it symmetric with respect to the origin or the y-axis? The natural logarithm function, it's not marked there, but this is an asymptote. So the y-axis is an asymptote for that function, meaning it gets closer and closer to that but never touches it. What is the domain of that function, meaning which x values does it have? The exponential function. Again, this is an asymptote, so the x-axis in this case is an asymptote. When talking about bounded, we're talking about y-values. What's it bounded below by? And then what's the equation of the horizontal asymptote? Said it's the x-axis, what's that equation? The reciprocal function, which is 1 over x, where of course x can't be 0, which why it has a vertical asymptote here, and then there's a horizontal asymptote here. Is that an even or an odd function? What's the horizontal asymptote and what's the vertical asymptote, meaning their equations? The absolute value function, y is equal to the absolute value of x, with a slope of minus 1 on this side and a slope of 1 on this side. Is that an even or an odd function? And then because of that, is it symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the origin? And what's it bounded below by? The greatest integer function has anything between minus 1 and 0 goes to minus 1. Anything between minus 2 and less than minus 1 goes to minus 2. So it takes the greatest integer less than or equal to a number. It has different notations for it. This is the traditional notation for the greatest integer. It looks like a square bracket with an extra line. And then it can say int of x. And then there's something, it's also called the floor function nowadays. So they write something that goes to the floor. Then there's also a ceiling function, which instead of going to the, goes to the greatest integer less than it, it will go to the integer above it. So this function, these are closed. These are open circles here at the end. So it does not equal that value at the end. So what kind of discontinuities are at each integer? Remember the kinds are jump, hole, and infinite. So which one is that? Then we have the sine function. Is that an even or an odd function? What's it bounded below by? What's it bounded above by? Meaning what's the biggest it can get to? What's the smallest it can go to? This would be the smallest it can get to. This is the biggest it can get to. The cosine. Is that an even or an odd function? And what's it bounded by above and below? By the way, this is 0 and this is 1. This is minus 1 and 1 in case you can't tell. The logistic function. This keeps getting closer and closer to the x-axis. And then this is the horizontal line y equals 1. It keeps getting closer to that. What's it bounded above and below by? And what are the... This one actually has two horizontal asymptotes. So rational functions can only have one. 
Other functions can have two, one as it goes to plus infinity and one as it goes to minus infinity. So as we go to minus infinity, what's the horizontal asymptote? As x goes to plus infinity, what's the horizontal asymptote? Okay, now I'm going to go through those with you to make sure, so double check your work. You should have had again odd and the origin. This should be even, symmetric with respect to the y-axis. It's bounded below by zero. The domain of this function is from zero with the zero included to infinity because the zero is included there. It's bounded below by zero. It's an, this one is cubing function is odd, so it's symmetric with respect to the origin. The domain of the log, because this is the asymptote, it can't get to zero, so here the zero is not included and goes from zero to infinity. The exponential, it can't go below zero, so it's bounded below by zero. The horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, which is y is equal to zero. The reciprocal function is an odd function. The horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, which is y equals zero, and the vertical asymptote, which is x equals zero. The absolute value function is an even function, it's, so therefore it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and the smallest thing is zero, so it's bounded below by zero. The greatest integer function has a jump discontinuity at every integer. The sine, because it looks the same right side up and upside down, is an odd function. It can't go below minus one, so it's bounded below by minus one. It can't go above one, so it's bounded above by one. The cosine is an even function, but it's also bounded below by minus one and above by one. The logistic function doesn't go below zero, so it's bounded below by zero. Can't go above one, so it's bounded above by one. The two asymptotes are y equals zero and y equals one. Remember that piecewise functions are functions that are defined differently, are in different parts of the domain of a function. So to find a particular value, you have to decide which rule. So for example, in this one, if I want minus one, then I would have to look at the rule that for x is less than zero, and I would put it in this function. If I have x is four, four is bigger than zero, so then I would use this rule. So you have to decide which interval your value belongs to, to pick which rule it is in. To graph, you're going to graph each piece, but only in the section where it belongs. So x is less than zero is to the left of zero, bigger than zero is to the right. So to the left of zero, I have graphed the line y equals x, and to the right of zero, I have graphed the quadratic y equals x squared, where it goes through zero, zero, one, one, two, four, three, nine, and so on. Which discontinuities does this have? It doesn't have any, and the reason for that is that at this particular dividing point, which is zero, it's zero here and it's zero here, so they meet at both of them. So no matter which one I were to put zero in, it would give me the same value, and therefore that function will end up being continuous. When those would give different values, they will end up being different. So there aren't any discontinuities at minus three, the value is at minus three, or you can look here. If I take the value minus three, it would be in this one, which says it's just minus three. F of zero again is zero, no matter which one of those I put it in, but technically it belongs to this one because this is less than or equal to zero. F of three, again, three belongs to this one, so I would put it in the squared, which would make it nine in the graph. As we go to minus infinity, the function goes down to minus infinity. As I go to infinity, the function goes up to infinity. I can have limits for points even when there aren't asymptotes. So as I get closer to zero from the left, so as I go from the left side, it goes to zero. And as I go from the right side, it goes to zero. Because the left and right limits are the same, that's why that limit exists and is zero. When you have that, that's when the function will be continuous at that point. If you have one of these and the left and right side limits are different and this limit will not exist as it approaches the number, that's when you will have a point of discontinuity. So on the second piecewise function, again, we have a line 2x minus 3 for x's which are less than 2. So here's our dividing point. And then on the other side, we have 
this negative sloped line for the x's which are bigger than 2. If you've graphed them again doing y equals mx plus b, I went to minus 3, did a slope of 2, but I only graphed for the x's which were left or less than 2. And then for this one, I went to a y-intercept of 4, did a slope of minus 1 half, which went through all of those points. Of course, when I drew it, I didn't start from here. I had to, to put my y-intercept there, but I only keep it for the x's bigger than 2, and then erase the part that was there. So you could draw it for all of that originally so that you can touch the y-intercept, but it's only for x is bigger than 2. And now we can see that there's a jump discontinuity. Again, the reason for that is, is if you put 2 in this function, you would get 1. If you put 2 in this function, you would end up with 3. So they do not, they would not give you the same thing. This is the actual function value because this one is for x less than or equal to 2, which is why I made this one closed and this one open. If I want f of minus 3, minus 3 is in this interval, so I would put minus 3 in this function to evaluate it. It would give me minus 9, or if I looked in the graph, minus 3 will go through minus 9. f of 0, 0 again is less than 2. 0 would be here, minus 3, or if I put it in this function, I'll get minus 3. 3 belongs to this interval, so I would put 3 in this function. If I put 3, I can't really tell where it goes here exactly, but if I put 3 and actually evaluate it, I get 5 halves, or 2 and a half. As I go out to minus infinity, the function goes down to minus infinity. As I go x is out to infinity, the function is going down to minus infinity. What happens at this point as I go from the left and the right? As I come from the left, this function will give 1 because I, that would be in this function. And as I go from 2, that would give me 3, which would be up here. Since the left and right limits are different, that limit at 2 does not exist, and that's why you have a jump discontinuity.